How can I start a business with Amazon? We're gonna answer that question in this video. Okay, let's rock. Let's talk about how you can start a business with Amazon. Okay, so I've started a business with Amazon through my trading card and collectible business, Collector's Cash. We sell on Amazon. It's one of the several platforms that we sell on. And it's a great way to generate income, revenue, and things like that. But I will say that there are pluses and minuses to selling on Amazon. It's a very interesting world when you're a seller on Amazon. You know, it's kind of that whole concept of, you know, too big to fail. Their business is so gigantic that they can make a lot of mistakes and be sloppy and, and, and neglect sellers and things like that. And it really doesn't matter, you know, from their perspective. And honestly, I don't think that uh, the higher ups in Amazon truly care about the sellers. That's just a personal opinion that I've learned. And I've got a huge, gigantic situation that happened at the end of 2017 that I will share with you on this video. So that if you're going to sell on Amazon, it's something you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of. And hopefully at some point, if this video gets enough views, Amazon will see it and make some corrections because they truly have shown by action that they just don't care about their sellers. They really don't. They act like they do, but they don't. So your question is, how can I start a business with Amazon? The simple way is you first have to have a real business, okay? So if you've got an established business, let's say you sell clothes or you sell books, you know, you sell collectibles like I do, well, then you've already gone through all the steps you know, you've got your business license, your tax IDs, you know, your articles of organization or articles of uh, incorporation. You've got your operating agreement, things like that, your EIN number, you've got everything you need. But if you haven't, let's, let's just recap everything that I just kind of spat out. So that way you know exactly what you're gonna need to have to start a business with Amazon if it's a fresh business, okay? So that's what we're gonna focus on at least to start. And then you're gonna to wanna to stick around and hear the story that I've got for you. Whether you've got a business or not and you wanna get on Amazon, you need to know this. It's just something great to know. So if you don't have a business, you're gonna to need to register, so you're gonna to need to form your entity for your business, right? So I'm, I usually do an LLC, a limited liability company. Check with your CPA, they'll tell you and give you recommendations on what you should do. I have done an LLC. So you form that and that will give you your articles of organization, your articles of incorporation. It's kind of the same thing. Now, if I remember correctly, Amazon actually didn't ask for that, but you do need that, save that. It is an important document that you'll need from time to time. After that, you're gonna to need to register an EIN number with the IRS. You can do this online through the IRS's website, irs.gov, and, and there's a million different things to click on. So you might wanna call your CPA and have your CPA help walk you through this because there's a lot of questions and things you'll need. You know, I've done this several times, so for me, I'm experienced, it's not a big deal, but you might, might wanna get help. So once you have your, say, LLC formed as an example, your EIN number, you're gonna wanna have your bank account set up. Your bank account is gonna be where Amazon every two weeks, they, they do deposits for their sellers every two weeks, so they only pay you every two weeks. And like I said, there's some fun stories to tell you about that. Um, they, uh, they're gonna need a bank account to, to wire the money into. So you're gonna have to set up a bank account and they're gonna ask you for your account number, your routing number, your address, all that fun stuff. Every business needs an operating agreement. Again, from my recollection, I don't think Amazon asked for that, but just in case Amazon ever was to need that, you're gonna wanna have an operating agreement and you get that set up with an attorney. Some people have done it, you know, they get on Google, they Google set up an operating agreement, there's really cheap, ways to set that up. I don't recommend going the cheap route because the operating agreement is basically the rules of the game for your business. Meaning who has the power within your business to do what, where, how, whatever. It, it details all the rules of your business. Uh, specifically like with you as an owner, you and your partner or you and your partners, who's got control to go borrow money, how much can they borrow, what can they sign up for, can they just go lease a car for the business, you know, there's so many things in there. So you're going to want to get with an attorney, that's my recommendation. So once you've got all that information set up, when you go to Amazon's website, again, there's, you know, tons of different links and things like that, but you can Google their help section, like start a new 
well, I said Google, you can search on Amazon's website or you could probably Google it and you can actually go on their site and, and look for how to start a new Amazon seller account and things like that. And you'll start seeing all the tutorials and Q and A's and things come up. And once you go through all the steps and there are a ton of steps, once you go through all those steps, then you're gonna basically have a registered business with Amazon and you're gonna be able to start selling. So it's obviously important uh, to understand that when you sell on Amazon, if you're selling a lot of products that are things that are you know a lot of people have it is a highly competitive business so what we you know pretty much notice is amazon's great for generating cash flow so it'll it'll bring in money a lot of times you don't make a ton of profit but you'll be able to sell off say slower selling or dead inventory turn that back into cash again you might not make any money you might not make a lot of money but at least you recoup your cash and you can spend that with new products and things like that so that's kind of what we've used it primarily for and every now and then you know you find a few niche products that you happen to have that there's not a lot of competition and you make good profit on so it's kind of give and take so let's talk about a couple horror stories right a couple terrible stories about being a seller on Amazon and this is just factual stuff it is what it is and it's important for you to understand that there is a uh, what do you want to call it there is a risk there is a loss factor when you're doing business with Amazon so Amazon like I've talked to in previous videos is all about customer obsession. So Amazon truly, no matter what they say, they truly only care about the customer. So they're there to take care of the customer, not you as the seller, not me as the seller. They Every now and then they've done gestures on small deals where a customer has an issue on a $10 sale and they just credit the customer, let the customer keep the product and they don't debit our seller account. So we don't lose money, the customer gets what we shipped them and nobody loses money and they get to keep that stuff for free. But the problem with Amazon is because of that customer obsession, there are situations where we shipped an item in the past, and this has happened multiple times, say it was $200, and the tracking shows that it was delivered, and we're pretty confident the customer got it, and they claim they didn't get it. You're gonna lose that case every single time. Amazon's gonna yank the money out of your account as a seller, even though you, show, you showed uh, proof of delivery. Um, so we put signature, you know, if it's over say 100 bucks or something like that, we'll just put a signature on the package, it costs an extra two or three bucks, and then the customer has to sign for it so we know when they got it. Well, that creates another problem. They might say, well, it's not what I wanted or it's not in the condition I wanted or whatever. They make some excuse. They just think it's like they can do whatever they want. Maybe they've opened it up and they complain about it. Well, Amazon allows them to return it, which is kind of crappy, right? As a seller, you're like, wait a second. It was brand new when I sent it to you. You open it up and now you think you can just sell it to me? And you know, if you're like me, you're a small business, you're not Walmart and Target where you're doing billions of dollars in revenue, that that's just an accepted principle of business where you're just like, oh, I don't care, we're doing billions, so we're okay if every now and then people open the toy up, play with it for two weeks and return it. As a small business owner, you're like, that's not fair, right? It's not fair. And they will do that to you from time to time. And so you gotta understand that a lot of the buyers on Amazon do take advantage of that so when that comes up, it's just gonna be a cost of doing business. It's not gonna be fun and something you're gonna to have to deal with. So another thing too that we realized, I think it was October of 2017, and this was a catastrophic thing that happened to our business because we had gotten to the point where our volume on Amazon was very high, extremely high. Maybe it was you know six figures a month or something like that. It was a, it was a, a large number. And you know when you, when you are a business and you become accustomed to that revenue, you know, that's something you kind of count on, right? You're counting on that cash flow. You've hired more people to ship and, and do customer service and whatnot as, based off that revenue. So if that falls off, kind of like what we're experiencing in COVID, your business kind of goes into a mini recession, right? Oh my gosh, you're not bringing in that money. Where are you gonna get it from? And so we had to be crafty. We had to be so-called innovative. We had to think of new ways to generate those sales. But what happened was Amazon had these functions where they have something they call it not authentic, right? And, and, and they don't mean necessarily that the products you're selling are not authentic. They just have this thing where it's called inauthentic, right? So it's, it's not not, it's in. And so when you hear inauthentic, you think, oh my gosh, what the heck? Well, everything we sell, we're getting from authorized distributors or we're buying our trading cards from the manufacturers directly. So of course everything we're selling is authentic, but they have this thing in the drop down box where these customers wanna dispute their purchase that they can select inauthentic, I-N and then the word authentic. And what it basically means is they didn't receive what they, what they paid for, right? in their opinion, right? So the customer has all that power. So then if you get too many of those, they just like suspend your account. And you have to like start sending um, distributor invoices and things like that to prove that you're not selling fake stuff and that you're selling what you know they're buying and all that stuff. Well, for whatever reason, we got into this endless eternal loop 
where we got suspended. And it, no matter what we would provide them, even though it was everything they asked for, it was like dealing with a robot where we would send them all the documentation and we would get this automatic response where it was asking us to resubmit the same documentation. So it was like, we would submit it and they would ask for the same thing. We would submit it, ask for the same thing. So it's this endless loop, like a hamster in a, on a wheel, not making any progress, just spinning. We're like, what the heck? And we would call Amazon and no matter who we talked to or what department we talked to, they were super nice to us, but nothing got done. And the bottom line is we were off. So our sales had stopped. So this had continued and had gone and we're like, what the heck do we do? It had gotten so bad. We were getting to the point where we're like, who do we reach out to? Can we get to the president, the vice president? Like who do we get to? And the long story short is we come across, we start Googling like similar scenarios and we come across this book and I brought it with me. It was a, a guy that was a very nice guy, CJ Rosenbaum. He had wrote this book, Your Guide to Amazon Suspensions, 2017, 2018 edition. So this is the one that we actually bought and we read it and it was very enlightening but if I was to sum up this book, it's like Amazon doesn't care, you know, with you as a seller. Seller are a dime a do sellers are a dime a dozen. And so understand that you're nothing special. If if you go away, there's other sellers that'll sell your products and and cater to the buyers. And you know, when stuff happens, sometimes it is very difficult to get back. And this particular person is an attorney. So he charges you a flat fee to go out there and try to get you back on Amazon, and he wasn't even able to do it. So we had to pay him and he wasn't able to get us back on. So long story short, you know, we, we kept bugging and prodding. It took an entire calendar year. I'm not kidding you. It was from like October, 2017, to like October, 2018, that we were completely off until we finally were able to sell again. And what was weird was we had FBA'd some stuff and FBA is fulfillment by Amazon. So that's when you ship stuff to Amazon. They store it in their warehouse. If it's there too long, they charge you storage fees. But when your items sell, they take care of all the shipping, which is convenient, right? You don't have to have people physically packing the orders, doing the labels and shipping them out. They fulfill them for you, so it's incredible. Whoa, whole nother slew of problems can, can happen as a result of that. I mean, I mentioned just the fact that you're dealing with the storage fees, but no, I mean, sometimes you ship them product and they claim you didn't ship them what you sent them. And they mix inventory, so you might've sent them like really nice, clean, undamaged stuff and then they mix it with people that sent fake stuff or stuff that wasn't in good condition. And so when your stuff gets fulfilled, I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. So we stopped doing that FBA, the fulfillment by Amazon, because of all the issues we were having with it. It was very scary to deal with Amazon. They kind of feel like, you know, the people behind the curtain, the people that matter, that you can't get to them. They're just too gigantic. And, and honestly, they've shown by action that they truly don't care about the sellers. They're not out there. They don't have a department that's taking care of sellers. That's a hotline you can call when you're experiencing a serious problem that can get expedited. And it's like, you know, they make 15% off of your gross numbers and they take 15% off of the shipping you charge too. So if you're charging shipping, they take 15% off of that. 15% are their fees. And you would think, you know, like say we had sold a million dollars in a year, they take $150,000 off the cake and we're doing all the work, right? We're shipping it ourselves. It's our products, we're buying it with our money and they take 15%, yet they don't wanna give true support. Not, not random 800 number, you know, hey, let me call Amazon and have a shoulder to cry on and somebody to listen to me, like a 900 hotline that doesn't do anything. Who cares about that? We're talking about real results. I'm talking about when my company was suspended in October of 2017, why the heck did it take a freaking year for me to get back on Amazon fully? Makes no sense. And we've been in business now 32 years. Back then we were in business almost 30 years you know, we're one of the most established trading card businesses in the country, in the, in the world. And we, you know, there's, there's just no hands on, there's no like fixing it. So I know we got kind of a little bit off topic, but I wanted to give you that information because I think it's important to share information, right? It's not just how do I start a business and go with it? Hopefully I give you the basic information on how to get on Amazon, but you need to understand that there's obviously the pluses is that you're going to be able to sell stuff and make money. It's going to be competitive, but you are going to see what I'm talking about. You will run into issues where customers are gonna to be tough and they're gonna, in a sense, indirectly take your money because in some cases, Amazon's got this platform that allows people to do that. And there are some bad apples out there and Amazon allows that, the, their platform for people to take advantage of the system, so to speak. And we've, we've been on the bad end of, stick, of, that, of that stick for a while. So anyway, I hope this was insightful. I really hope you learned some stuff about selling on Amazon and the basics about how to start a business. You are gonna need your you know, legal paperwork. Like I said, you're gonna need your federal employment identification number. You're gonna need a bank account. 
you know, you're gonna wanna have a registered business and then you're gonna have the ability, obviously, once you get going to start adding your products and starting to sell. So hopefully the good outweighs the bad for you. The sales that you're gonna do are gonna make you a ton of money. I hope you're gonna do great. And I hope this video has been very helpful. If you liked it, please click the like button, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe. And remember, in life and in business, it's never easy for anybody, no matter how hard it gets, just like the horror story that I went through, that terrible freaking story, no matter how hard it gets, you put one foot in front of the other and you never give up. You keep trying, you keep pushing, pushing harder than anybody else. And remember to be the hustler.